In our gardens are hidden hundreds of wild stories that we rarely discover. Great dramas of life and death. Stories about teamwork or looking out for one's own interests. About standing on one's own feet. About doing the impossible where mistakes can cost you dearly and life can change in the blink of an eye. But where the most incredible things can also happen. For a year, we find life as it unfolds in our gardens to get close to the secrets of the garden. The summer is upon us in full vigour. It's unusually hot and peak season for the smallest animals in the garden. The climate is flexing its muscles. Without warning, it all changes and ends in a capricious cloudburst. Many of the animals in our gardens are also showing their more temperamental sides. Some during the day, others at night. This is when they become menaces. Most people hate wasps, especially hornets. They scare us with their stressful, intrusive behavior a fright to find hiding in the fruit bowl. But behind every villain is a hidden secret. This lady is a hard-working girl in need of energy. The small female hornet has a demanding job back home in the family. Now she's hypoglycemic. She needs energy and she gets that from the sweet, fresh summer fruits. She ought to fly off immediately, but she'd like to hang out a bit longer to refuel because she's exhausted. But first she cleans her antennae after the sticky sweet snack. She uses her two front legs to rub them clean. But now she must get on. Work is waiting back home. The Hornet girl may live in a shed, but her home is a piece of art so beautiful that even Gaudi would be envious. The hornet girl and her sisters spend every waking hour building and optimizing the hornet's nest. They create the nest from a very special paper pulp, which they meticulously mix from equal parts saliva and wood. That leaves a solid structure, which is still light as a feather. The construction was put into operation by the hornet girl's mother the strict and autocratic queen who lives at the center of the nest and rarely shows her face at the construction site. She's only interested in the hornet girl's labor and her scent makes the daughters suppress their own need to have kids. That's why the hornet girl and all her sisters around her are barren. It's ruthless work having to fly out for food, pollinate flowers, and build the nest, but the hornet girl has no choice. Soon more little sisters will hatch and the nest must be finished by then. Not too far away, a blackbird 
Richard is contemplating his next meal. Although he may once in a while go for a hornet, it's not his favorite. The black and yellow stripes are something that scares off the big enemies. And this colorful spider has grasped that. The wasp spider is simply trying to be a lookalike because her species has figured it out and adapted accordingly. She loves eating grasshoppers. She's brought that with her from the south. She's originally from Central Europe, but the warm summers have sent her north. Now she's sitting here in her pirated coat, enjoying the sun and the garden's delicacies. There are plenty of those in our gardens this time of year. The field grasshopper is well camouflaged to the human eye, but his music can be heard more than a hundred meters away. He's busy with his own project, so he's not paying attention to the almost invisible spider's web in the lawn close to him. He's looking for a female to mate with, and on hot days like this, he's really in the mood. The field grasshopper attracts the females with his music, and he's actually a bit of a rock star with a huge repertoire of hits. He rubs the back of his thigh against his wings in an advanced 12-tone song to attract a lady. But he's not the only one. Another little experienced male musician may also interrupt with a serenade. Banjo Jewel is on. The better sounding one gets the ladies. Nearby, a female grasshopper has had her lunch interrupted by the two rivals Bel Canto. If she's interested, she'll sing one of their melodies back at him. The two rivals have ventured closer and are now playing their hearts out. But the female plays hard to get and calmly eats on while the two suitors are kept in suspense. Foreplay can last up to two or three hours. Without notice, one throws in the towel and slinks off. Now it's time to strike. He has a go with a softer song the so-called seduction song. But it's not in the bag yet. Lunch must be completely finished first. Finally, the female shows her interest. She turns around and opens her bag. And now there's a reward for the persistent musician who quickly finishes. The female now lays 10 small eggs by drilling her back end well into the ground. From then on, the eggs are left to themselves. His mission as a father is accomplished and he enthusiastically jumps off wholly ignorant of the fact that this was his last encounter with a lady grasshopper. He shoots himself off with a force of 10 times gravity.
but winds up in the web of death. The wasp spider laboriously wraps up his prey in his own homespun cling film of fine silk. The field grasshopper fights to the end, but must end his days in a body bag of silk in the scorching sun. on all. The landscapes are changing. Darkness falls later than usual and leaves fewer hours for the shy nocturnal animals. The female hedgehog goes on her usual round every night. But today she doesn't care about the cat food, although it's her regular takeaway joint during the hot months. To her, the height of summer is just the right time to go and find a father for her future hoglets. She's in heat and releases a seductive scent that can be tracked from far away. has caught wind of her scent and is purposefully heading to her. And then there's a flirt in the air, maybe. He goes straight to her quills and circles her. lightly at her unapproachable exterior and despairingly tries to find an opening that doesn't hurt. But it can be hard to get at it. The female hedgehog has made herself into a huge package of nails and she's completely dismissive. He's too small and too young. Size does matter. The jilted young male must just scurry off again. After he sloped off, the female hedgehog finds herself a quiet corner of the garden and starts something highly unusual. She twists her awkward body into a strange position and starts spitting on herself. Maybe she's spreading bacteria on her quills. Maybe she's camouflaging her scent. Nobody knows for certain. Because the hedgehog's foaming self-spitting of the quills is one of the garden's inexplicable secrets. After such an ordeal, the female hedgehog is ready to shuffle on into the night to find the right father for her future hoglets. Under the cover of darkness, some of the animals that can disgust human inhabitants of the garden come out as well. A small young rodent has just
just got up. She's hungry both for herself and her unborn pups. The female rat is heavily pregnant at 20 days. According to the plan, she's due tomorrow. But food has been scarce lately because the heat doesn't leave much apart from dried up wrinkled leftovers and she needs energy for her upcoming labor. By nature, she's very curious and has an incredible sense of smell. She can tell in which nostril the smell is stronger. When we humans think we're clever and put out traps and poison, she's often smarter than us because she can smell what is dangerous to her. She's also very social. She just needs to smell someone similar and their friends from then on and share. Even though this rat stranger clearly isn't family. The small rodents' empathy for one of their own kind outweighs their mistrust of strangers. She's otherwise skeptical when it comes to her food. If there's something unknown on the menu, she's careful and only eats small bites to make sure she doesn't get sick. But this plum seems to have been approved. Now she needs to rest for the remainder of the night and gather her strength for tomorrow's important event. The following morning, all trace of the nightly activities are gone. But hey, what's that? There's a dance party in the flowers. The first refreshed bees are almost buzzing in step. Do not adjust your set, it's just how a small bee sees the world because bees see colour very differently than we humans. They can't tell apart black and red, but on the other hand, they can see ultraviolet light, an ability they use to find nectar and pollen in the flowers. are honeybees, the ones we know best and are most proliferous in the garden. It's efficient and organised work going on here in the flowers with us humans as employers. The honeybees are descendants of foreign bees introduced by us so they only live in beehives that we've built for them. We enjoy their honey while they get a permanent address. When the honeybees come home with their pollen, they're greeted by the community. The code of entrance is their scent because strange bees aren't welcome here. But with there being so many species of bees, these are wild and solitary bees that often labour on their own. It's hard work competing with the organised honeybees for the flower's pollen and nectar. And they don't have the security of a permanent address either. If they are lucky, 
they can find a vacant rental on the edge of the garden. A small, solitary, patchwork leafcutter bee got lucky and got one of these coveted homes. She's busy decorating the kids' room for her future little bee babies. She's figured out how to steal resin from the trees and uses it to build protective walls around the kids' rooms. When it hardens, it works both as protection against germs and hungry enemies. Inside the flat, there's a small chamber for each of her future daughters. She lays an egg in every room and pre-stocks the refrigerator with a pollen-packed lunch and some honey. Preparing the kids' rooms is hard and sticky work. It takes her an entire day to finish one room. But every time she leaves the construction, she risks unwanted guests getting in. Because as a solitary bee, she has no one to keep watch, but must manage on her own. After several trips back and forth with construction materials, she's finally ready to add the finishing touches. She seals up the door. Her work is done. Now all that's left is to hope that the eggs will survive the winter and turn into small, fully-fledged bees. What she doesn't know is that it's already teeming with life behind the sealed-up door. But the little orange larvae aren't future wild bees, but parasites eating her eggs. It's a hard fate being a wild, solitary bee. Our gardens are full of flowers and pretty colours this time of year. Besides being a larder to the animals, they are a pleasure to our eyes. In a less colourful corner, the garden has grown into what the animals see as a small and lush rainforest. The prickly burning nettles are unapproachable to us humans, so the animals have it all to themselves. most important plant in the garden because they attract life of all colours and shapes. The plants are also a favourite for several butterflies. This beautiful darling is called a small tortoiseshell. It's one of the most common in our gardens. It loves nettles because here the small butterfly larvae can grow up safely between the stinging hairs. The kids enjoy the highly nutritious leaves which they munch up with great pleasure. It's hard to imagine that this little chubby larva someday will turn into a beautiful butterfly. The tortoiseshell, like all other butterflies, has small scales on its wings. It's the scales that give the butterflies their amazing colours which are a warning for hungry enemies to stay away. 
on sunny summer days like this, you can get lucky and see what fantastic flyers they are. As loved as the beautiful butterflies are, this next resident isn't quite as popular. The Spanish slug. The slimy, rusty red body makes most jump with horror as it munches its way through our gardens. It's both alien and unwanted. It was nicknamed the killer slug because of its great appetite and it may even eat its own kind. We only see it cause havoc and devastation, but in reality, it cleans up as well. It especially eats wounded and damaged plants. And when it eats its own, it's its way of burying the weakened and dead. If we take a closer look at it, a fascinating animal emerges. On its tongue, it has no less than 27,000 little razor-sharp teeth. The big hole on the side of its body is its breathing pore. Like us humans, it breathes using lungs. It's lightning fast for a slug and can move as much as 10 meters an hour. Its muscular belly is like a well-trained six-pack. It can suck its way up the smooth glass window and effortlessly climb the highest peaks using slime and stomach muscles. But although it seems invulnerable, it has a soft spot. The rising temperatures are challenging to it. And now it's stuck in the sultry sun. The slime and the slug are drying up. It needs water just like so many other garden animals. The gardens and the animals are thirsty right now. They long for rave. And finally, it arrives. Violently and suddenly. In great quantities in these new times of a more unstable climate. For some, the heavy drops from above are felt cataclysmically. While to others, they are pure heaven. The thirsty plants slurp up the water. The nettles straighten. All of a sudden, the sun is back. We're taking time off and enjoying life on the patio and the warm summer days. But in the shed not too far away, there's no time for that kind of relaxation. Because the hornet's nest is finally done. And little ones have come along. Several hundred larvae now fill the nest. It's true chaos with all the little siblings. The larvae are demanding and screaming for nutritious delicacies, constantly. So the little female hornet is definitely not on a summer break. 
She's flying in regular service back and forth between the garden and the shed to meet the demands of the little siblings. And she can sniff out the lovely spread from a great distance. Actually, the female hornet is vegetarian. But sweet, regurgitated nectar isn't enough for the little ones. They need more. She can tear a steak into small pieces with her sharp and strong jaws. But all she needs is a small bite. If we'll share with her, that is. Because at our table, we don't see a hard-working hornet, but merely a menace to our hot summertime. One of the most feared of pests doesn't find its way to the pleasures of the table, but sits down in the grass waiting for its next meal. The tiny female tick is famished. She's two years old and hasn't eaten for a whole year. Now she's waiting for her third and final meal in life. She needs food to be able to bring her future young into the world. And a hungry tick is never one to kid with. She intercepts everything with her fine sensory system. She can sense both breath, smells and body heat from any warm-blooded creature. Her entire life she's waited for the meal that's now coming across the lawn. The female tick strikes quick and instinctively finds her way to the dog's ear, which she can easily cling to. The dog doesn't feel anything when the tick bites a hole, because she has extremely sharp teeth and her saliva keeps the blood from coagulating, so she can drink all she needs. In the course of a week, the paper-thin tick has turned into a big, plump matron. But that's no wonder. Because in a single meal, she drinks 600 times her own weight, and the body swells to five times its size lengthwise and across. She's now ready for her most important purpose in life, laying eggs. Afterwards, she will lay down and quietly die. darkness falls, the nocturnal animals once again venture out into the warm summer evening. Each one with their little secrets. And each one searching for food. The female hedgehog is out earlier than usual. She's busy at the moment and needs to hurry up finding food because someone is waiting for her back home in the compost heap. Six little hoglets have entered the world. They are just a few weeks old and deeply dependent on their mother. They spend the wait practicing to become adults. There are quite a lot of quills to keep hold of, and even a small turn of the head is an accomplishment when the nest is one big pincushion. The hoglets still have baby quills. Not until they are about a month old will they get the same quills as their mother. Right now they are defenseless and need her to come home.
The mother is busy finding food, and only at the last minute, she realizes the danger. She rolls up. A bite to the soft belly could be catastrophic for her. Her defense is more than 7,000 pointy quills. Each quill has its own muscle. They are full of bacteria and her strongest weapon against attack. The little ones just sense that their mum is back. They are happily ignorant of the drama the hard-working mother must endure night after night to produce the milk they need. In four weeks, if all goes well, they'll be big enough to fend for themselves. Behind the dustbins elsewhere in the garden, is one that has yet to have her babies. The little female rat is past her due date. She's hungry and needs food, although she's more troubled by her big belly than ever before. Normally, it would be a piece of cake getting up to the tempting dustbin. Now it seems both insurmountable and dangerous. But she's willing to run the risk for the sake of her unborn pups. The next morning, all is changed. And in the garden shed, chaos rules. The mother of all the hornet daughters, the queen, is dead. After ensuring the next generation, her life cycle has concluded. she was the one who decided with her pheromones what the daughters were to do. Now they no longer have anyone to tell them to gather food and take care of their smaller siblings. So the young female hornet and her sisters have lost all purpose and meaning. They are frustrated and aggressive and it's developing violently. The female hornets pounce on the sibling larvae.
they eat the little ones that they formerly spent all their lives caring for. The walls of the nest which they painstakingly and zealously built, they now start gnawing away again. Everything is on the verge of collapse. The little female hornet flies off, never to return again. She needs something sweet for strength. And at the honeybees, there's an alluring smell of honey. But the honeybees feel the threat and flock like a group of broad-shouldered doormen. She's not welcome here, and they strike at her. But the little female hornet doesn't give up. She's become moody and unpredictable. The honeybees can't penetrate her armor with their stingers. But every time they bite her, they leave a pheromone that attracts more bees. In the heat of the battle, one of the guards accidentally pushes the hornet girl towards the entrance. But she's quickly overpowered by the other guards. The honeybee's strongest weapon is to surround her and try to boil her to death with their body heat. The hornet girl fights to the end against punches, kicks and heat. Finally, the honeybees manage to chase her off. Homeless and battered, the female hornet must search on for the sweet stuff. Gluttonously, she slurps up the wine. She's lonely and disillusioned, and dead drunk. To us, she's a menace ending up where she can no longer hurt us. Autumn is coming to our gardens. The little hedgehogs have become teenagers. And now the male must stand alone. Some animals leave us and head south. While others need to get ready for a long winter nap. The reserves must be filled so they can be ready for the cold season. It's last call for the animals in all of our gardens.